I'm sure we've all had the experience of taking a piece of fruit, maybe an apple or an orange, and though on the outside it looks quite appealing, once we get beneath the skin, we find an apple which is rotting from the inside out, or an orange that is very dry or much more bitter than we expected. The fact is that much of the fruit we buy has been specially selected and treated so that it looks good and pleasing to the eye in the hopes that we will buy it. If any of you have apple trees, ask yourself, does any apple on your tree look like the ones you might buy in the supermarket? The outward show is very important these days. It's part of the marketing strategy. Things need to be well packaged and presented in order to entice us to purchase them. But we all know that sometimes what looks good and promising can leave us very disappointed. Jesus encounters the Pharisees and what he sees at the external level, level might be quite promising. These are men who are very dedicated to the practice of the Jewish faith. They try to follow every rule to its finest detail, all, they would say, for the glory of God. And they are so successful in the eyes of those around them, and in their own eyes too, that they pride themselves on being model Jews, examples to everyone else. But Jesus is able to see beyond the facade. Jesus can always see to the heart. And what he finds there leaves a lot to be desired. And so some of his harshest criticism and some of his toughest words in the gospel are spoken to the Pharisees. At one stage, he points out their hypocrisy so strongly that he tells them that they are like whitewashed tombs, lovely to look at on the outside, but inside those tombs there is nothing but death, decay and corruption. And for us, there is a warning in this gospel. It is easy enough, unfortunately, for us to live out our faith in Pharisee mode. It's easy to slip into a way of living out our Catholic Christian faith at the superficial level, just going through the motions, but never allowing our union and friendship with Christ to touch and change the heart. And the person who exemplifies this for us, the most perhaps, is the Apostle Judas. He spent three years, morning, noon and night, with Jesus. He heard and saw in person everything Jesus did in the three years of his public ministry. He heard and saw all the many wonderful things Jesus said and did, which are not recorded in the Gospel. And yet we find him, in the end, with a heart that is unmoved and untouched by the grace of God, a stone-cold heart, dead set against Jesus. It is all too easy to just go through the motions, to give God lip service, as Jesus, quoting the prophet Isaiah, puts it in our Gospel. Lip service saying and even doing the right thing, but with no heart in it. We can stay at the merely ritual level of our faith, going through the motions, but never really allowing the power of the faith to engage the heart. And so we can find followers of Christ who, though they seem to be fully on board with the gospel, allow all kinds of things which are unworthy of Christ and beneath their dignity as a Christian to take root and set up home in their hearts. As Jesus says in the Gospel, 
It is from within, from men's hearts, that all these awful things that he lists come forth. Fornication, adultery, murder, envy, slander, and so on. And they make our hearts unclean. The faith we profess, we must also seek to live fully. Now, none of us does that perfectly. But we should be careful that we do not allow things to fester in our hearts, which are at variance with the heart of Christ. And should we find that some root of sin has indeed taken hold of our hearts, colonized our hearts as such, then it is our duty to hand that over to Jesus and allow him to take back the ground given over to that sin. And that we supremely do by repentance and the sacrament of confession. In the sacrament of confession, we open up our hearts and allow the purifying, the cleansing and life-giving love and mercy of Christ to wash our hearts clean, to make our hearts new. And isn't that why Jesus came? That the hearts of God's people might be made new. That the hearts of God's people, that your heart and my heart may be like his heart pure, full of love, alive with the Spirit of God.